All right, so reviews in 3D printing are generally a tough thing because you're constantly having to battle and balance between two opposing forces. That is, on the one hand, there's a lot of pressure when a new printer launches to get that review out as quickly as possible um, so that you can capitalize on the hype and all the excitement and questions surrounding the machine before it all kind of dies off and people move on to the next hype machine. But then on the other side, balancing that review with something that is more substantial than a glorified uh, read of the features. Because you want to really know beyond, okay, yeah, the parent does this, that does that according to the features list, but is it really reliable beyond that one to two month uh, honeymoon period that really every 3D printer has before something breaks down in either uh, the parts or the design? So being the type of person that likes to create content that I know I would have liked to have seen and answer questions I know I would have asked, I'm setting out to try to create some uh, review videos where I cover a sort of a longer time scale and heavier testing. So today I'm going to be talking about the Creality Hallets Guide, which is the 8.9 inch new printer from, well, you guessed it, Creality. So I've been using and testing this printer for the better part of 60 days since I got it and unboxed it. And in which every day in those 60 days, I've been doing at least one 3D print, uh, if not more, depending on what the, uh, the print job was, um, doing a variety of different models, ranging from cosplay props to miniatures for myself, as well as a whole bunch of different products I print for the various e-commerce businesses I run. So it's a good mix of different items of various sizes, densities, whether it's hollow, whether it's solid, et cetera, to give you an idea of what this printer is capable of. So anyways, let's dive right into it. For disclosure, Creality sent me this printer to beta test and to provide technical feedback to their engineering team. So I'm making this video review because I wanted to, not necessarily because I had to. So all views expressed here is based on my own experiences. To kick off the review, let's talk about the things I noticed about the printer as soon as I unboxed it. The first impression you have is that it feels heavy and solid, but in a good way. That nothing feels like it's going to flex or wobble during a print. When you take a closer look at the z-axis, you'll notice that feeling is actually indeed the case, with a wider and thicker strut of aluminum holding a pair of MGM-15 rails parallel. And to actually drive the build plate up and down, the Hallett Sky is using a thick ball screw instead of the usual 8mm, 2mm pitch lead screws that most other printers use for linear motion. This setup will definitely stay rigid for pretty much any print job that you throw at this printer. A good example was a super heavy solid skull bell that each of the four parts took roughly 1.4 liters of resin to make. The next things I noticed was the build plate and vat synergy. I find the design of both these parts make a huge difference in the user experience as well as the overall reliability of the printer. The build plate, unlike its prior iterations with the LD002H, is taller and keeps a large bulk of its quote unquote legs out of even a full vat of resin, which means far less mess on your gloves when handling the build plate and clearing off prints. The aluminum build plate itself is thin enough that's not going to displace large amounts of resin in the vat during the early stages of the print. And this is the first printer I've seen that uses self-locking washers to keep the leveling screws from coming loose. Speaking of leveling, my unit came factory leveled and so far with more than 60 days of printing I have yet to re-level the printer. Moving over to the vat. There's quite a few things I really liked about the design of this particular vat compared to anything else I have in my resin print farm. For starters, this vat has handles on either side, which is a significant quality of life improvement when you need to clean the vat or change resins. Even though this vat is made of machined metal, which can be difficult to add additional features and details compared to an injection mold vat, this vat still has markers that indicate several different resin levels, including the max level of approximately 1.5 liters of resin, and a lip and a notch that makes emptying the vat a little bit less drippy and messy. That being said, the best quality of life improvement I found on the vat, and have not seen in any other 8.9 inch printer so far, is little machined feet on the bottom of the vat that lifts the edges up from whatever table surface you put the vat down on. This keeps the FEP sheets clean from any stackly charged dust 
as well as eliminating the possibility of puncturing or denting the FEP sheet because you did not notice the metal shavings or other debris on your workbench before putting the vat down. Please don't ask me why I know of this very oddly specific scenario. The final case-related quality of life improvement has got to be the lid design, which does away with those terrible lids that you have to use two hands to carefully lift off the printer and instead uses a clever hinge design that can be lifted with a single finger and hold its position when you open it, which is handy when you're gloved up and don't want to touch the lid with your resiny fingers. All right, enough about the quote unquote boring parts of the printer design, and now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the light source. Pretty much all 8.9 inch resin printers on the market uses a parallel LED light array source in an attempt to evenly cure each layer of the print job. I stressed attempt because getting the optics right with these arrays is tricky. The Hallett Sky actually approaches this problem slightly differently with a simple but novel design. Instead of placing medium to low powered LEDs at 20 to 40 millimeter spacing apart in a grid pattern, why not place a single concentrated set of higher power LEDs totaling 70 watts and use a cleverly angled mirror to bounce the light up so it evenly covers the mono screen without hot spots or cold edges? And to this end, the Hallett's Guide does a really respectable job, as my measurements with a cheap photography lux meter indicated relatively minimal variance in the randomly sampled areas compared to par other parallel LED arrays found in many of my other printers. The evenness of the light also reflects well in the prints themselves with no signs of gridding or underexposure at the edge of the plate and that the prints themselves are incredibly sharp. Using my daily driver resin, Ministry of Resin Durable, I found the cure times to be very comparable to the Saturn and the Mono X. The build volume is also comparable to both the Saturn and the Mono X with an 8.9 inch diagonal mono screen and a Z height of 200 millimeter. Digging deeper into the electronics and the software is where we come to the first thing I have mixed opinions on and have had a fair bit of frustration. I'll start with the good bits. Compared to other printers, Creality elected to step up their boards and use something with a beefier ARM processor, that is specifically the Cortex A53. This gives them a lot more computing power than you typically find in a resin printer running the usual STM32 based ARM chips. This allowed them to build a control board that has interesting new features like fully featured Wi-Fi that can actually handle remote filed uploads direct from the slicer and receive over the air firmware updates. The printer holds all the print settings like exposures, lift speeds, light off time, etc on the printer itself, and you can make changes to those settings on the fly without having to re-slice each individual file. Unfortunately, the issue that comes to play with this board stack is the fact that the Hallett Sky only accepts encrypted CX DLP files that are created exclusively with their new slicer Creality Box. This means if you're slicing workflows using a third-party slicer like Chidubox, Lychee, etc., you won't be able to support, hollow, and directly slice your models into a format that the Hallett Sky will accept, which means you'll have to either do all these things with Creality Box, or you'll have to pre-support and hollow your model in your favorite slicer, export them as a STL, and then slice the STL file with Creality Box in order to load it up. It's not the end of the world, but it is a pretty big annoyance if you're like me and have built a business and a workflow around a slicer like Chudabox or Lychee and want to keep the simplest workflow possible. The beta versions of the Creality Box that I tested felt like unfinished alphas that needed a lot more work and testing before they should have been released. In fairness to Creality, they have made some strides in improving it, but I believe support or SDKs should be provided so that both Chudabox and Lychee can slice to the printer natively. So in my logbook, I ran roughly 73 print jobs in 60 or so days and consumed about 54 liters of resin. The majority of the print jobs was doing batch run work of a product that I've been selling, but I'm not ready to quite dox yet. But it was a file that I had carefully pre-supported and validated and just kept running the print job over and over and over on the same file. Similar behavior to what you'd find in a typical print farm. Across all those print jobs, I had the FEP sheet break on me only once, which was my error four days after I unboxed the printer. 
I also had six print fails. Three of them were the result of trying to make the support settings on Creality Box work. One of them was because I had the wrong layer time set for my resin and triggered a support failure. And two of them was me being adult and running out of resin mid print. In general, I found this printer to be extremely easy to set up and operate and a reliable workhorse even with heavy daily use with large full build plate print jobs. If Creality opens up the CX DLP file format to be sliceable with either Chidu or Lychee, I could easily see this printer being a solid performer in a farm, well worth the higher pricing compared to similar units. So in my personal opinion, the Hallett Sky fits well if you're the type of person or business that wants a solid machine that does not compromise on hardware design and quality, wants a printer that can handle full plate jobs quickly and without failures, and can find value in keeping a library of pre-sliced models loaded on the printer to be able to adjust exposures and speeds without having to make the trip back to your workstation and re-slice the model. It's probably not a good fit if you're very price conscious or you want the cheapest possible machine in dollar terms, or you consider the idea of not being able to use your chosen third-party slicer an absolute deal breaker. Depending on where my portfolio of 3D printed product e-commerce sites go, I could easily see myself buying four or five more of these printers and operating them as a farm to produce products in small batch runs reliably. I'm remarkably surprised that I have not been more reviews on this particular printer by larger YouTubers and it's largely been smaller content creators like myself and my friend Matt at Akuma Mods reviewing this machine. If you're in the US and you want it relatively fast with no markup over MSRP, I highly recommend getting it from SaintSmart who operates US warehouses across the country and has a record of shipping in stock product quickly. If you're in Canada, my friend Nico from concept3d.ca is an official reseller of the Hallett printers and can get it shipped anywhere in Canada without the hassles of international shipping. Otherwise, going to Creality is an option if you're patient and willing to wait. But honestly, the price difference between the US and Canadian resellers is very comparable to buying direct from Creality and not having to play container roulette with ocean freight does have a value these days. Anyways, that covers my first large printer review. Let me know what you think, if I missed any details, or if there's something I should cover about a printer in future reviews. I tried to see if I could hit this from the angle of doing extensive testing for longer than the usual printer reviews. So, I hope you liked the video. If you found it useful, interesting, helping you figure out what you want from your next resin 3D printer, and you wanna see more videos, as well as like general modification content, some build videos hopefully, et cetera, et cetera, you should totally uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell, as well as like, uh, comment, and share the video, because that really does help push this video up and many others like mine up in the YouTube algorithm. And ultimately leads to helping me grow my channel a little bit bigger. Every little bit counts. But that's that. Um, I'm off to uh, do a couple more videos, including another uh, review video for another printer I've been holding on to and testing pretty rigorously for a couple weeks. And I'll be back pretty soon. Anyways, see you in the next one.